Hi everybody, it's Webby and welcome to another video. Uh, as you can see behind me today, I'm looking at the brand new 2022 Toyota GR86. Um, as you might know, there's two models in the range, GT and GTS. Uh, and this one here is the manual version of the GTS. Uh, so that's the car we're going to be having a look at today. Um, I've got to say a big thanks to the guys at Berwick Toyota. They've lent me the car for the weekend very kindly. Um, so I'm going to get to have a drive of this car and show you guys around it and give you my thoughts as well. Um, so let's start on the outside of the car. Let's have a look at some of the differences between this and the first generation 86, um, just to see what changes Toyota have made uh, to the new model. So the first obvious change you see with this new 86 is this new design front end with this big lower grille at the, at the bottom of the bumper. Um, you've then got the side vents as well here at the side, these sort of little flicks. Um, they are actually real air vents as well, which is quite cool. Uh, and then the air goes inside and there's vents at the side there as well to let the air out from underneath the wheel arch, which I think is a really clever idea. Um, under the bonnet of the new 86, we've actually got a 2.4 litre boxer engine. So it's up in capacity from the two litre that you had in the old model. Uh, and it comes with a healthy bump in power and torque as well. So where the old model was 147 kilowatt, this is now 174. And torque has gone up from 205 newton meters to 250. So that's a big jump in both power and torque. And you can definitely feel it when you get behind the wheel. Something we'll do shortly later on in the video. Um, but yeah, as we go further around, let's have a look at some of the other bits and pieces of the car. Uh, so this is the GTS model and the only way you can actually tell the difference between this and the GT from the outside is the matte black 18 inch alloy wheels. So literally that is the only difference you can tell. Um, it is nice that they've got Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres on um, because as always with the 86 this thing's got a fantastic chassis um, so handling is absolutely superb. So again at the back of the car, Toyota haven't really changed too much of the format for the 86. You've still got this huge, great twin exhaust at the back, which I really like, um, and this sort of black plastic section down here as well. We've now got GR86 badging on the rear, uh, LED tail lights, um, and then you've got this sort of built-in little sort of duck spoiler at the back as well, which I think is quite nice. Um, it's fairly subtle. Um, I know on the older model, you could have this sort of extra body kit and yeah, this massive great wing and side skirts, but you still had tiny little wheels. And that frankly looked a little bit ridiculous, but I think the styling and proportions of this new model are much better than the old model. It's kind of filled out a little bit, um, but yeah, it hasn't sort of gone crazy with lots of wings and spoilers like some cars do. Um, and the interesting thing is, in terms of weight, it's only gained 16 kilos over the old model. Despite the fact we've got a bigger engine, there's obviously more technology inside the car, more safety equipment. Um, so the fact they've kept it down to 16 kilos is fantastic considering how much more power the engine's got, it's obvious that this is going to be quicker than the old model. In terms of performance, it actually does 0 to 100 in 6.3 seconds. And that's exactly the same as a Mark 8 Golf GTI with a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox. And that car's got slightly more power, but a lot more torque. Uh, so it's interesting to see that this manual GTS is still pretty quick off the mark. They freshened up the boot design a little bit. Um, so just above the Toyota logo, you've got the little button to open the boot. Uh, and then just above that, you've got the rear camera. Strangely enough, this doesn't actually get rear parking sensors, which is very odd because sometimes in a two-door coupe, you don't get fantastic visibility out the back. Um, so the fact you've only got a rear camera strikes me as being a little bit odd. Um, I know it does sort of make the back of the car look a little bit nicer. You haven't got the little dots in the rear bumper for the parking sensors. Um, I'd happily forgive that and have parking sensors and have the little dots myself. Um, just to save you accidentally backing into something or you know, something like that. Um, so yeah, a little button there just to open the boot. It's not fantastically big if we're honest, but then you don't buy a two-door sports car um, to go and do like, you know, a massive trip to Bunnings or anything like that. Um, boot size is 237 litres, so it's not huge, but you can fold down the rear seats to extend the boot space if you do need to put some longer items in there. There's a little bit of extra storage under here. Um, the 86 doesn't come with a spare wheel. We've just got one of these tire inflation kits with the, the bottle of glue if you do get a puncture. Um, other than that, make sure you remember the RACV. Ah, now in terms of running costs, you get five year unlimited mileage warranty with the 86. Servicing's every 12 months or 15,000 Ks. And the first five are capped at just $280, which is pretty reasonable in this day and age um, when everything is going up in price. Uh, so yeah, 280 for the first five services, uh, I think is really reasonable. 
Right, so let's have a look inside the new GR86 uh, and see what's changed in here. Uh, so keyless entry is standard, which is good to see. Uh, as I said, this is the GTS model. Um, so we do get the upgraded seats, uh, so they're part leather and part suede, uh, which is an, an upgrade over the standard cloth on the GT model. Uh, and the front seats are heated, uh, which is nice to see as well. They're really supportive. You've got this lovely sort of bolstering down the side here, so it holds you in. Uh, which is great if you're going for a bit of an enthusiastic drive. Uh, we do get nice things as well, like the sort of suede on the top of the doors as well, which feels quite nice. Uh, just gives it a bit more of a, a nicer feel inside. Uh, let's jump in and have a look. So here we are inside then. Um, it doesn't look too different from the previous model. Um, it is a sports car, it's not got buttons everywhere and lots of gadgets. Um, so it is fairly basic uh, on the inside, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of true to the original 86. Uh, we've got the 8-inch touchscreen there. Um, so you've got your Apple CarPlay, you've got your Android Auto. Uh, we've got the digital display there in front of the driver. We'll switch that on in a second. Uh, we've got climate control here. We've got the six-speed manual. Uh, the six-speed auto is a no-cost option, funnily enough. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you go for, they are the same price. Uh, we've got the heated seats here. Manual handbrake, again good to see, um, but it does stick up a little bit too high for my liking. This is in the, the sort of down position. If you pull it up, it's all the way up there, so it actually does sit quite high. Um, not that that matters when you're parked up, but when you're driving, that still kind of sits in the way, although it doesn't make for a bad armrest for your left arm, to be fair. Then we come round, and we've actually got like an armrest section here, and if you press this little button, it actually opens up to reveal a couple of cup holders uh, and then also where you plug your USB in uh, for your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The good thing about it being there is actually once you plug your phone in, you can close that back up so you don't see your phone. You haven't got cables uh, all around the cabin, which I really like. Uh, so then it's quite a nice, neat cabin uh, and everything is sort of fairly tidy. Um, nothing's really changed too much from the previous model. It's kind of a, if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. Um, it is, like I say, it's fairly plain, it's kind of like functional, um, but this car is all about the driving. Uh, in terms of back space, I'm not even going to try and sit in here because it's tiny back here. Um, even sitting behind me, uh, being five foot six, uh, as you can see, you don't get an awful lot of space back there. Uh, if you had a short driver and some children in the back, maybe they'd be okay, uh, but I'm certainly not going to try and squeeze myself in there. So here we've got the start stop button. So foot on the clutch, let's bring this into life. You've got that familiar sort of boxer sound of the engine. You get the nice GR logo there uh, on the sat nav screen. Um, that's actually really sort of simple to use. It's not sort of over complicated, it hasn't got too many buttons. As you can see, it does your basic stuff really, really well. Um, but most people like myself, you'd plug your phone in, you'd use your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. And really that's all you need to be fair. So it's actually nice, it's sort of a fairly basic interior um, and not lots of buttons everywhere. Uh, if we come across, then we've got the digital display in front of the driver. Let's just zoom in, can we have a look a bit of a, a better look at that? Uh, again, so you haven't got too much information going on here. Uh, rev counter there on the outside of the dial uh, with the digital speedo on the inside. Um, and then over on the right hand side, engine temperature um, and fuel gauge. On the left, you can change some of those dials there. Uh, at the minute, it's just showing fuel consumption, um, but we can do things like, obviously, a trip computer. We can look at tire pressures, uh, battery voltage, uh, and also oil temperature as well. So it kind of gives you the important stuff without sort of putting too much in there uh, to overcomplicate things, which is actually really, really nice. So if we step back a little bit, again, steering wheel is fairly functional. It's actually quite nice, it's not too big. Um, I don't like a big, thick, chunky steering wheel. Um, so this one's actually quite nice. It's fairly light. It's, it's a little bit thinner. Um, so if you are going for a bit of a, a drive, you can, you know, your hands sort of fit nicely on it. You're not sort of gripping it sort of really uh, strangely. Um, buttons on here just for your phone, your audio. Um, and these ones over here operate the screen in front of the driver. Um, we've, we've got standard cruise control on this manual version. Um, if you go for the automatic, you then get adaptive cruise control. Um, I'm not quite sure what they don't put in the manual, but never mind. Um, you probably don't need it because you're just going to spend half your life uh, going around some lovely country roads. And before we go out for a drive, let's have a little listen to how the engine revs 
because um, a boxer engine sounds quite different to an inline four, an inline six, or even a V6. Um, so yeah, let's have a listen to this new 86. So say that sounds amazing even from the inside I don't know what it's like on the outside but from inside the cabin that sounds fantastic so now we're going to take this GR86 out for a drive and just see how it performs on the road I've got really high expectations of this because um, everybody I've spoken to said how fantastic the chassis is um, but on the old model they always said oh it needs more power it needs a turbo um, because the chassis can cope with so much more so on this new model it hasn't got a turbo but it has got more power and more torque than the old model. So it'll be interesting to see, does it need more power or has it got enough? Um, but yeah, we'll find out when we go for this drive. Um, I'm gonna try and find some twisty roads, so that should be quite cool, um, and see what the handling is like, uh, especially with those Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres. It's actually quite refreshing to drive a manual. Um, most of the cars I'd get to drive these days are, are all automatic. So yeah, to drive a car with a manual gearbox is actually quite nice. In the last one I drove, uh, Fiesta ST, it's all the sporty stuff, Fiesta ST, Hyundai i20N, Hyundai i30N, um, so yeah, it's all the sporty stuff these days that seems to be available with a manual gearbox, which I think is a really good thing. Just from the initial feel, it's just got more than enough power. Um, I was worried that the torque was going to come in sort of really high being, you know, a naturally aspirated engine. But actually the torque seems to come in fairly low. It's actually quite fun to drive, even just like around the houses and, and that type of thing. I haven't even found a, a good twisty road yet. I think the only thing I would like to see in this 86 would be rev matching. Um, I'm no expert driver, so I can't do hill and toe or anything like that. So yeah, if you were going for a bit of an enthusiastic drive, it would be nice to have rev matching because every time you down change, it would blip the throttle and uh, one, it would sound, make you sound like a hero, but it would actually make for a nicer, you know, more fun driving experience, I think. Um, so yeah, if there was one thing missing, I'd say rev matching. Other than that, I'm really impressed so far. All right, so I found a bit of a twisty road. So hopefully we can have some fun. the sort of road that this car's made for. Some nice twisty bits. Just as long as you know the road well you can have a bit of fun. And uh, but yeah it punches really well out of the corners uh, if you've got it in the right gear. Uh, that extra torque from this 2.4 engine definitely makes a difference over the previous 2 litre model. I'm not sure how well you can hear from the camera or what the mic's picking up, but it's actually quite noisy in here. I think there's a combination of a bit of road noise, a bit of tyre noise. Obviously the road surface has a bit to play with that, so depending on you know, what the road's like that you're driving on. But yeah, it does get a bit noisy in here. The actual seating position is really good. Um, the steering wheel's nicely sort of directly in front of you as are the pedals. For some cars they're a little bit sort of offset to the right. Um, but this is actually, yeah, this is perfectly fine. 
visibility is surprisingly good. Because normally when with a, a coupe and you've got you know, sort of big wide pillars at the back of the car because you've only got two doors, um, it's sometimes a little bit restrictive, but it's actually pretty good. Um, there's a decent view basically everywhere you look. Um, even the rear windows are decent size as well. In terms of competition for this, obviously the Subaru BRZ is its direct competitor because it's the same car under the skin. But if you want something other than a BRZ, or if you just you know you compare and, you know, these two cars, you've kind of got to start looking at things like an i30N or Honda Civic Type R. And the reason I mentioned those is because there's not many other cars with this sort of type of you know performance car, if you like have a manual gearbox yes you can look at sort of a Mustang coupe but then you're looking at sort of a lot more money having said that yeah the Honda Civic's getting more expensive the i30N is getting close to sixty thousand dollars so yeah it doesn't really have real competition as such but the one thing that is very different about this BRZ slash 86 is the fact that the engine is normally aspirated where everything nowadays is going turbocharged um, because they want you know better efficiency but more power and the you know the fuel that comes with the turbocharged engine so everybody's going away from normally aspirated um, again the Mustang would be an obvious sort of competitor but then it's a much bigger car it's not an agile car whereas the the 86 is a very agile car now you can throw the set of corners um, and have an awful lot of fun. So that brings us to an end to the video for the 2022 Toyota GR86. I've got to say, now I've driven it, I've actually got a newfound appreciation for this car. I always thought it was a little bit, I don't know, sort of underwhelming, wasn't very quick. Um, but this new model really makes a big difference. You know, that extra power from the engine, uh, just the styling that they've changed from the outside of the car. Uh, plus obviously a bit more technology has made it such a better car than the old model um, it's a fantastic thing to drive as you would have heard throughout the video um, i really really enjoyed my time in the car there was a couple of drawbacks in terms of the amount of noise that came through the cabin but you know no car is perfect is it you know you've, you've got to be um, if there's a car was perfect then i don't know i don't think it exists really does it there's, there is no such thing as a perfect car um, if you've got any questions about the car, feel free to leave them in the comments below for me. Um, I'll answer them for you as soon as I can. Um, again, a huge thanks to the guys at Belk Toyota for lending me the car for the weekend. Um, go and see them if you're looking for a new or used Toyota. Uh, I'll put their contact details in the description for you. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that notification bell to find out the next time a new car review goes live. So that just leaves me to say thank you very much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.